Welcome to Let's Therapy, where we get real and raw about your mental health, faith, and blended family. We're your hosts, counselors, Scott and Vanessa Martindale. Now let's therapy. Hey guys, welcome back to an episode of Let's Therapy. I'm your host, Scott Martindale, licensed counselor of 17 years and founder of Blended Kingdom Families. Before we get started, just want to put a disclaimer out there. This is not a substitute for counseling. If you are having any issues, we definitely recommend you find a local counselor. If it is immediate and urgent, please dial 911 or 988 to notify the National Suicide Hotline and get help immediately. But today, we're going to be talking about a really common concept that happens in relationships, in marriage, and a lot of times in co-parenting situations. And we're going to be talking about the term gaslighting. So what is gaslighting? It's an action that is repeatedly lying or to blame someone in order to manipulate and ultimately control them in a relationship. So I know a lot of times when we have arguments, we tend to be, uh, we maybe come out defensive or we tend to overgeneralize, or we tend to minimize the comments that are coming from the other person or our spouse. And we may not mean to, but what we're trying to do is really manipulate the situation so that it creates self-doubt in the person who's maybe bringing that issue to us. So examples of gaslighting, and I'm just going to tell some phrases here, it says, uh, you know, I did that because I was trying to help you. So maybe your partner comes to you with a concern or a feeling, and this is your immediate response. Or maybe the response is, that's not what happened. So you're immediately defensing what they're telling you and then putting it back on them to prove or validate their feelings. Or this is your own fault. So somebody comes to you with a concern, and you're immediately turning around on them saying, this is your fault. Or minimizing, just saying, hey, this is not that big a deal, or it was a joke, or you're overreacting. Again, you may have found yourself saying these phrases to your spouse or to a colleague or to somebody you're having a disagreement with and not understanding that this is what gaslighting is. Uh, A couple other ones are, I don't know what you want me to say, or you blow things out of proportion, or you just have no clue. So really what you're doing in, in an example of this is maybe your spouse comes to you and says, hey, when this happened, it made me feel like this. And instead of validating your partner's feelings or listening to them, you're immediately gaslighting them to go and prove or validate their feelings so that you will take them seriously. So how do we combat that? And how do we avoid this happening to us? So when we talk about the phrase, you're overreacting, you're invalidating your partner's feelings. So basically, whatever they're feeling, you're basically saying, hey, I don't validate what you're saying. You're going to need to prove to me in more circumstance so that I'll take you seriously. And you're devaluing their worth. And you're denying the truth. So by saying, are you sure that happened, or you don't remember things clearly, or that's not exactly what what I said in that situation. What you're doing is you're devaluing and invalidating their feelings. So once we want to speak up and we want to be assertive. So once you identify this abusive behaviors, communicate directly with your partner on how their behavior affects you. So for example, if you're being gaslit or your feelings are being devalued, go to your partner and say, listen, I had this feeling and I wanted to communicate that to you so that we could discuss it. And when you said, hey, this is your own fault or you're overreacting, what you're telling me is that you don't value the way I feel. And what I would say to that is in a lot of times we're not ultimately trying to devalue our partner. So the person who's actually doing this, we're not trying to do this. Maybe we're just unclear of the situation or we want further, you know, further clarity of why you're feeling that way, but we weren't trying to devalue you, but ultimately that's what happened. So communicate that, hey, when this happens, you make me feel like this. And when your partner tries to convince you of a lie, you may say, all right, we have different memories of what happened. So if your partner says, that's not what happened at all, say, I understand. We may have different memories of what happened. So let's not debate about this. Let's just go back, grab some clarity on this, and come back and discuss this 
at another time. Again, your partner may be defensive by nature, and you know we don't really know everything that's going on with our partner or spouse all the time. So, you know, maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they've been, you know, hit several times with different things and they're just overreacting to what you're you're telling them or you're the telling them the way you feel. So just clarifying, hey, we may have different recollections of these events. Why don't we go back, think about it, and then come back and talk about it another time. Uh, when your partner tells you that you should or shouldn't feel, so you may say, I understand how you feel, but my feelings are my feelings. So again, if your partner is saying, hey, you shouldn't have reacted that way or you know, maybe you're overreacting, just explaining to them, hey, this is how I feel and I own those feelings and this, they're very real to me. So if they cannot be wrong, just this respect the way we feel. So that's another way that you can, again, combat this. And when your partner tries to pull you into a circular conversation and say, I don't know where this conversation is headed, Let's just take this up later when we both have a clearer mind. So again, this is a way of if you come to your partner and you're communicating feelings and they say, well, that's not how you feel or you're maybe misreading the situation or basically just kind of turning everything around on you. Again, this is a great time just to say, hey, let's just take this up another time when we have a clearer mind. The next thing we can do is set firm boundaries. And possibly just letting it go. When you start talking, follow these steps. So set limits around the usage of certain words and behaviors. I always say as a marriage counselor that when your spouse comes to you to communicate feelings, you want to validate those feelings. Even if you may not agree with those feelings or those feelings may make you upset, you do want to validate them so that they feel like you know, it's safe place. It's a safe place to come communicate. So if your partner comes to you and says, hey, when, when you said this, it really made me upset or it made me sad. If your spouse feels that way, just validate that. Say, hey, I'm sorry that that is the way you feel. And I'm sorry that that situation made you feel that way. You know, and then maybe a recourse of that is saying, hey, I didn't mean to do that. This is what was going on in my mind. This is what I was thinking, or this is what I was feeling at that time. So we want to make sure that we're validating and setting limits around uh, certain words and behaviors. The next thing is try to make them aware of patterns of their toxic behavior. Again, a lot of times when one spouse is a little bit more reserved or less assertive or more avoidant, you may find that your spouse comes to you with a feeling and then you are gaslighting them and then they're retreating. So they're not even going to say anything to you. They're just retreating. And when that happens and we want to combat this, we want to tell our spouse, hey, every, you know, or many times when I come to you with feelings, you react in a certain way. So what we're doing is pointing out toxic behaviors so that our partner's aware of them. Lastly, If this continues and you and your spouse cannot work on this amicably, we always suggest finding a great biblical counselor. Go seek counseling together. Work on your communication patterns. Work on your um, conflict strategies on how you resolve conflict. Guys, our relationship with our spouse should be one of absolute, not only intimacy, closeness, openness. I mean, it is one that God has joined together together. And your spouse should be the safest person in the world for you to talk to. But we're humans and we sin. And we may get into these toxic patterns of behavior where we're defensive or that we're saying things to our spouse that are devaluing their feelings or we're gaslighting them and we may not know that we're doing this. So if this is the situation that you find yourself in, follow these steps. Go find a biblical counselor. Go seek help. You don't have to continue in that pattern of toxicity. Guys, hope this has helped. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Let's Therapy. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Take care. 